Hello guys, I'm Shubham Shaw and uh, welcome back to my third tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm gonna cover Java Virtual Machine. So before we move ahead, let's look at the recap. Guys, in the previous tutorial, I have given you a brief history and why Java is created. I have uh, shown you the start, uh, where the programming was started, uh, uh, what are the types of programming, so why Java is created and some of the features of Java. Uh, in brief. So guys, uh, let's move ahead for this tutorial. So guys, what is Java Virtual Machine? Java Virtual Machine is an application which converts the byte code directly into the machine executable code. And this is the reason behind its platform independence and security. Guys, there were many uh, JVMs. So the one which was developed by Sun Microsystem is written in a C language and the one which was developed by Oracle was uh, written in a C++ language. And there were many different uh, third party vendors which provide the uh, JVM. Some of them were written in uh, small talk and some uh, in the Java itself. Wait guys, don't get disheartened by hearing these buzzwords. I'm gonna clear this out what actually bytecode means and the reason behind its portability and security. So before I clear this out, uh, let us make a comparison between uh, the normal compilers. Uh, uh, I will give an example of a C compiler and then I will uh, show you what actually happens in a uh, Java. So, before I show you how a C program is executed, let me show you first a simple C program. Yes, this is a simple C program. Mm, this is the header portion, this is the comment section, and this is the main body of the program. I will show you step by step what actually happens when we compile a C program. So, guys, if you don't have any knowledge of C language, then just don't bother about it. Just look at it once. So guys, uh, what we call a compiler in C language, it is not just a compiler. It contains four software inside it. First one is preprocessor, compiler, assembler, and a link editor. What they all do, I will show you uh, step by step. Source code is first converted into extended source code by the preprocessor. Preprocessor performs three tasks at this stage. It first removes the comment from the source file and it replaces all the macros present in the program. Like here we use max. It replaces uh, replace, uh, the max where we used in the program by five. And the third task, it extends the included file. Like here we use uh, studio.h. It extends this file, but not the program inside it, just extends it. And uh, this is the task of the preprocessor. Then the extended source code is uh, compiled by a compiler to assembly source, uh, assembly code. Assembly code is uh, just a set of instructions, which are guys very difficult to read. That's why I have not shown you how it looks like. And then the assembler Assembler, what assembler does? It converts the assembly code into the machine code, but it calls the object code because uh, they are machine codes, but they are not the executable one because the library files are not yet included in it. This is what the task of the link editor. Link editor links the object code with the library files, and this is how it converts uh, and uh, uh, it, it converts the main source code into the executable file. This is the whole process of compiling. Guys, uh, here it looks like so big processes, but all this happens in a fraction of a second. By our one click. So what actually happens? The source code is directly converted into the machine code by our single click. And this is the reason why these programming languages were machine dependent. They convert the source code directly into machine code and the machine code depends upon the operating system and the processors on which the program is running. So for different processors the machine code is different. That is why they are machine dependent. And this problem is solved by Java. Now how a Java program is executed? Java compiler converts the Java source code dot Java file into the bytecode. 
and the bytecode is the reason behind its platform independency. Guys, what bytecode is? Bytecode is uh, similar to assembly code, but they are much more optimized so that they can be easily converted into the machine code at runtime. And uh, this uh, uh, bytecode is uh, then converted by the Java Virtual Machine to its executable code. Guys, Java Virtual Machine is machine dependent. As I already told you that JVM is uh, written in C++ and uh, some sort of assembly languages has been used to enhance its performance. That is why JVM is machine dependent. Uh, for different uh, uh, machines, uh, they have a dedicated JVM so which converts the bytecode into the executable code at the runtime. This is the reason why Java program is uh, machine independent. Guys, this is the ma magic behind its supportability byte code. Keep in mind. Guys, uh, now I'm going to give you an example. Uh, just don't bother about what I am writing right now. I will uh, explain you uh, how to write a first program in the, the next tutorial. For now, just uh, look what will really happen. As I have saved this program here, this is test.java, this is the source code. Let us see what uh, will really happen when we compile this program. This is the command for uh, Java compiler and then the name of the program. Because after successful compilation, let's look at here. Test dot class file. That, guys, this is uh, what a byte co code is. This is the reason behind its uh, platform in, uh, independency. This is why. Uh, this is what makes a Java a portable program. That's all for this tutorial, guys. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. To subscribe, press subscribe button. Feel free to comment, like and guys don't hesitate to share.